Hi again. Um, so this is another from the mailbag question. Uh, someone wrote in and said, uh, as you can see here, hey, I'm trying to include the number of days to create a proper amortization table. I also might want to do some interest only type stuff. Um, and then it basically says there are a few different ways to do interest calculations. And to sh the short version is essentially they want to be able to see one version versus the other and see what the impact is. So in this very simple mock-up, I basically have, you know, some basic terms. I'm like, hey, it's 10-year term and 25-year AM and to start with no interest only. And we've got an interest rate of 4.6%. And there's a bunch of other stuff down here I'm not going to worry about. But for our purposes, what really matters is I want to be able to choose between a few different amortization methods. Now, these are three methods. There are definitely more methods than just this. But again, these are three methods. We've got uh, 30 over 360. So in that case, each month is treated like the same. Uh, we just pretend each month is 30 days. We have actual over 360, where we actually worry about, like, how many days in the year there are, and, like, is it a leap year? And then we have actual over 365. And as the person who wrote in notes, uh, a lot of insurance companies do 30 over 360. CMBS likes to do actual over 360. Community banks might be doing 365 over 360. Again, they're different methods. Uh, and I realize that actual over, you know, 360 is not the same as 365 over 360, but the point is there are a few different methods here. So how do you choose between one method and the other? These, if I look at where they're going from an arrow standpoint, they're all going to this amortization schedule. And if I took a look at that amortization schedule, we can see that we have uh, a few different ways of doing it. So the first option, if I have this set to 30 over 360, the way I think of it is there are really two things that make this run. There's the thing that keeps track of how many days are in the month, and then there's the thing that keeps track of how do you calculate the interest. The days in the month thing has a very simple if statement that if we take a look at this thing, it essentially says, uh, first it says if there's nothing in that period, blank it out. Uh, let's not worry about that. It then says, if the name of the method is 30 over 360, hard-coded is 30 days. If not, take the current date minus the prior date, right? So here, because I have it set to 30 over 360, everything's set to 30 days. Whereas if I picked a different method, like actual over 360, then it would actually count how many days are between May 15th and April 15th, or June 15th and May 15th. And these are just e-date functions that are going forward a month, right? So 615 becomes 715, 1015 becomes 1115. Okay, so that's the day part. So the first part is, is each month 30 days? Okay, if it is, you're done, that's easy. If it's not, it then calculates the number of days. And then the second thing that makes this work is this if statement. And it says, if the name of the calculation method is actual over 365, then take F9, that's the interest rate, multiply that by the number of days in the month divided by 365. And if it's not actual over 365, it would have to be the third method that we haven't talked about, which is actual over 360. And then it would be, uh, you know, the interest rate times the number of days over 360. And then once it figures out, uh, you know, how we're calculating interest, it then multiplies that by G9, which is, you know, the balance. Um, and there you go. So I really think of this as a two-step problem. Step one is how many days are in the month? Is it actual? Is it exactly 30 days? And step two is then once you figure out how many days are in the month, 
what are you using over here? You know, is it the days over 365? Is it the days over 360? What's kind of a nice touch here is if you think about it, and I like the way this person built it, if I make this 30 over 360, it hards codes this as 30 days, but then when it does the interest, it says, is it called actual over 365? It's not. Therefore, it just takes the number of days and then divides that by 360. This works both for actual over 360 and 30 over 360, because in both cases, it's the number of days of the month over 360, right? So I actually kind of like the way this person built it. They, they sort of use the second option in this function to basically calculate interest for both 30 over 360 and actual over 360. I think that's kind of a, a nice way of doing it. Uh, certain elegance, if you will. Uh, I realize that when I talk about elegance in Excel models, that's almost as bad as when I call an Excel model sexy, sort of showing that I should really get out of my, you know, four, dry, four walls of drywall prison here. But nonetheless, um, that's, that's that. So hopefully you find that to be beneficial, um, and that's interest calculations, and that's another one from the mailbag. Uh, again, I always invite people, you know, email me questions, thoughts, feelings, emotional needs related to Excel, and I will do my best. And uh, until I see you again, keep building better models. Oh, and final thing, which I always like to point out, uh, again, my website has a bunch of cool stuff, so... Uh, carrealestate.com. Be sure to check that. And as I was saying, until I see you again, keep building better models.